Welcome to the Boxing Bookie. It is good to be back. Uh, second show, second show. We're doing the other. I got these odds late, so I wanted to get um, the, the bets in. I wanted to get the p- picks in for the Pro Box card. Um, so that's why we're doing this other one. We're doing the undercard fight, and it's Freddy Rojas, Freddy Rojas uh, versus Christian Baez. And uh, this is really interesting because a lot of people have high expectations of Rojas. And I, I want to, and there's very altering takes. So I want to get into Rojas and show you guys how to make money on, on Rojas. <clears throat> Uh, but before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow uh, the Boxing Bookie on all forms of social media. Uh, the Boxing Bookie comes at you for every major fight, and even the not-so-major fights like this one. Showing you how to bring down the house. There's always a bull market somewhere. Follow me. I will bring down the house together. The odds makers, the, the, the Boxing Bookies, they don't know what they're doing. I do, and I'm going to show you how to consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. I don't bet. I don't gamble. Uh, but if you do, I'm going to show you how to make money. I use DraftKings to show you the odds. And uh, I'm going to show you how to consistently make money here. I like DraftKings. User-friendly. The interface is, is, is user-friendly, and I, I like the odds. It gives you you know a pretty decent book. All right. Also, follow me on Texas Boxing Scene. That's on YouTube, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. Let's get into the Freddie Rojas and Christian Baez fight. Freddie Rojas has a deep amateur ped- pedigree. Multiple national championships. He's 25, which is interesting. Uh, it's a little late start um, for, you know, a touted prospect like that. So, you know, he's 12-0 and 0 now. He's been pro since 2021. So he's been pro, I don't know, three years. So he turned pro in 2022. Uh, and he's being moved along relatively quickly. He fought D'Angelo Cunningham in, in the Houston area. He's fought a lot in Chile. He fought Gilbert Venegas here in Florida, in Florida rather. And then he fought on most recently on uh, in San Antonio on a showbox card. And he got an eight round decision over Sal Bustis in a fight that I, I thought was much closer. I was at that fight. Uh, it was a right Ramon Cardenas headline. I thought that fight was a lot closer than the judges had. The judges basically gave every round to. Rojas, which I, I didn't see it that way. But he's a good fighter. Uh, good pop, specifically in the left hand. You know, good movement. He's in and out. He's not easy to hit. He's not easy to time. He's got excellent feet. He's a southpaw. Very fluid, athletic guy, pinpoint accurate, uses his long, long jab. Stalks from the outside. He likes to stalk from the outside. He mixes up head and body really well. Like he's a very well trained fighter. You can see the deep amateur pedigree. You can see the skills and the talents that he has. It's, it's, it's obvious from jump, but he's like awkward and orthodox. And I feel like he doesn't really commit to his shot sometimes. Um, he, he just seems awkward. Like he, there's like a little bit of an awkwardness to him. I mean that in a good way and a bad way. He's tall and rangy, and he, and he fights that way. He's really good at using his size, his reach. He's good. He he's six two and he's southpaw and and he fights that way like he's conventional uh, he's un- unconventional and and awkward and and he's he's a difficult guy to deal with especially one that has pop he's got eleven knockouts in his twelve fights he can definitely hit you know I don't think he's got monster one hitter but he's got good pop. And the power is at the end of his punches. You know, he throws these long, straight shots. Exactly. He doesn't pull any punches. Everything is straight down the pipe. He fights the way you'd want a tall southpaw to fight. I'll leave it at that. We're going to find out what the ceiling is. We're not going to find out what the ceiling is against Christian Baez. Baez is a guy that you would think from the looks of him likes to get on the inside, but he doesn't. He likes to actually fight from the outside and in, in, in the mid-range. He's not really an inside fighter. He doesn't put a lot of pressure on. He's not a high-volume guy. I think, personally, he's tailor-made for Rojas. Honestly, I, I'm i looking at him. I'm like, okay, this is really good matchmaking from Pro Box. If their goal is to make this kid look good, and it is. You know, Melvin Rivas, Gary Jonas, the whole crew there, they've done a good job matchmaking this fight, for sure. 
you guys may remember he fought Baez fought uh Petrus Anyon on Showbox earlier well last year now. There's not much he can do. He he lands, you know, he, he lands power shots from, from, from range. Like I said, he's fighting way over his weight class. He doesn't have a great jab. He's not a pressure fighter. He moves okay. He can get in and out okay. He likes to move around the outside. He's just not that good at it. And I, I, I don't think he's a terrible fighter. I, I think he can make this competitive to a degree. And I don't really see any path for Baez to win this fight. They have him listed at super lightweight. He's fought he, he's fought Luis Alberto Lopez. The, the uh, and that wasn't that long ago. That was 2019, I think. He fought Luis uh, Alberto Lopez, who's a featherweight world champion. Fought him at, I think, 30. He's fought Ruben Torres, lightweight. He fought Kevin Johnson. I think that's a little closer. He's been in tough. He's gone the distance. Not really. There's just not much. There's tape on him. But he doesn't really. He's an opponent. He's a live. He's a body. That can that can kind of endure some shots. There's nothing he does really well. He's not a terrible fighter. I don't mean there's like he sucks or I'm just saying there's nothing he does particularly well. There's nothing he does above average. He's just gonna go in there, he's gonna move, he's gonna try to survive, he's gonna land a couple, he's gonna land a couple shots. He will land some shots. He's a southpaw too. He'll he'll land he'll land a straight left for sure. I, you know, I, I just think this, you know, he's got names on his resume, so I just think this is really good matchmaking and a guy that's tailor-made for for Baez. <clears throat> uh, my only question is, is, does Baez get the stoppage? I mean, does uh, Rojas get the stoppage? And it's, 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 it's a little bit complicated. So, Rojas minus 900 is what it is. It's not great odds. I don't know. I'll bet it's going to pay you 11. You might want to make that two times bet. Make it make it 20, 22, 22. If you got, I'm not convinced. The I hate these odds, right? Rojas by technical decision, it's paying by decision, it's paying 380. It's a nice little bet. It really is. Over six and a half is paying even money. I'm just leaving it at Rojas on the money line. I'm just leaving it because I'm not convinced that Rojas is going to knock this guy out. I'm thinking this thing can go the distance, and you might want to bet on that. You you might want to take Rojas on the distance, but I'm just taking Rojas on the money line. We can clean up on this fight. I would do a two times bet, make some, make some. Money on this, you make a 22 22 on a $200 bet. Parlay that with the other video that I just did in the main event, and you can really make some money on this fight. If you want to take the over or you want to take Rojas by decision, it's not a bad bet. I'm not convinced that this is going to end early. Like the odds makers are telling you this is going to end early. I don't necessarily see it that way, but Rojas is definitely going to win. It's a risk, guys. This is what gambling is about. If you want to take the risk, Take Rojas by decision. The odds pay well. He, he could knock him out. I, I, to me, this is like a 50-50 fight. Whether he, it's 50-50 in terms of does, does he knock him out or does he go the distance. The odds are telling me he's absolutely knocking him out. He's a lot bigger. He's not a guy that really guns for knockouts. So, like, Petrus Anyan. Like, he's not that kind of fighter. He's more patient. He's more calm. Right? He stalks a little bit from the outside. He very well could get the knockout, but very well could go to this too. So I'm laying off that. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh, please also subscribe to my Patreon. Um, you get all types of great perks. Free t-shirt. You get the lock of the week. You get all types of great perks if you follow my Patreon. Um, it is it is now the 17th, January 17th, 2024 from Texas to the world. Thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside